Hello, my name is Dr. Joseph McHale, and I have the privilege of serving as the Chief Medical Officer of the International Myeloma Foundation, and I'm going to give you a rapid-fire overview of the great research that was presented at the ASCO and EHA meeting, the American Society of Clinical Oncology and the European Hematology Association meeting in June in multiple myeloma. I'm going to divide this briefly into three sections. Section one is CAR-T, section two is biospecifics, and section three is a wildcard section. So CAR-T cell therapy has really revolutionized the way we treat multiple myeloma. We've seen unprecedented response rates with the two agents we have now, both IDA-cell and SILTA-cell. And the first of my key abstracts was the one that was profiled at ASCO and was actually plenary abstract. So it was in the very top abstract category at the European meeting, and it was the CARTITUDE 4 trial that compared giving SILTACEL to standard of care regimens like daratumumab, pomalidomide index, and daratumumab, bortezomib dex in patients uh, with early relapse of myeloma, meaning only one to three prior lines. My, the the CAR-T is now approved after four lines of therapy, and the difference was dramatic. Whereas those standard of care regimens kept people in remission about a year, the progression-free survival still hadn't been reached yet with SILTACEL, and looks like it's probably going to be two and a half or three years. So this is a dramatic finding and will almost definitely mean that we'll see CAR T-cell therapy earlier in the disease course. On, on the CAR T-cell theme, though, we saw lots of other things. Secondly, we saw what I call fast cars. We speed up the production of cars. We had both uh, an abstract from China and from here in the U.S. that looked at speeding up the manufacturing process instead of taking four, six, or eight weeks between the stem cell, the T cells being collected and being prepared for the patient, that that can be done within a manner of days. And so uh, in one of the studies in the PHG uh, trial, we were able to give it back to patients within about 10 days and with the Chinese study within a couple of weeks. And we think this is going to speed up the process and help patients who need to get their CAR T cell therapy more quickly. Uh, the third aspect of CAR T cell therapy, so we saw CAR 4, we saw the fast cars, and now we're seeing new model cars, if I can call it that. So, so far, everything we've been using in CAR T cell therapy is targeting BCMA or B cell maturation antigen on the outside of the myeloma cell. Well, now we have a new target, GPRC5D. Sorry, it sounds like a license plate, but it's a very important target. And we now have our first CAR T cell therapy that is targeting that. And it was quite impressive with an 86% response rate and actually 76% response in people that had had a BCMA treatment beforehand. So as we learn the sequencing of CAR T, these set of abstracts that I just shared with you are very important. We're likely to use CAR T cell earlier. We're likely to be able to use CAR T cell faster. And we're now going to have different targets for CAR T. Section number two is on bispecific antibodies, really the hottest area in general in multiple myeloma right now. We saw an update on the talquetamab uh, bispecific antibody, which targets that same GPRC5D uh, and may likely be the very first bispecific targeting GPRC5D that will be approved. And we hope we may see that approval in late 2023, if not early 2024. Secondly, we saw combinations with bispecifics, and perhaps the most exciting one was the redirect trial where we saw teclistimab and talquetamab together. So teclistimab is already approved uh, by the FDA for us, and so we use it uh, to target BCMA, but now with talquetamab targeting GPRC5D, we can target those two things together. And it was really quite impressive. There was not a lot of additional side effects when we used the two drugs together, but we did see the response rate go up over 90%. So this, I think, really speaks well to the opportunity of combining these drugs with others. And then lastly, we saw two uh, other new ones coming into the field. L-renatumab may well be the next drug approved in multiple myeloma. And we saw this bispecific antibody very effective, even in patients that had had prior BCMA-treated therapies. And so, again, it's making us think more about how we're going to sequence these bispecifics. And the other new kit on the block, as it were, is linvoseltamab. And I thought this was particularly important because this was now using a bispecific less frequently, where instead of being given it weekly, like, like the earlier ones, it's now being given every other week. 
Um, and we may be able to do it with even fewer step-up doses, meaning we can give it more quickly to prevent or to reduce the risk of cytokine release syndrome. So section two is about bispecifics. We see talquetamab coming to the field. We see new combinations being developed. And very soon, we're likely to see l and linvoseltamab in the clinic. And then lastly, section number three is kind of the wild card section. We saw different abstracts that covered different areas. Obviously, I can't cover them all, but I want to highlight three very quickly. Number one, the DREAM3 study that compared belantamab to pomalidomide. And this was a study that was negative, and it was one of the reasons why belantamab was removed from the market. But there were some indications there of the activity of this drug. And as we look at it in other trials, we may well see belantamab come back to the clinic. Secondly, we saw some interesting studies looking at maintenance strategies more aggressively in higher risk patients using carfilzomib and pomalidomide in the maintenance setting from the group at Emory. And it was very encouraging to see that in this area that is sometimes very difficult to treat high risk myeloma, we may have better options for patients. And then lastly, the MASTER protocol, which was presented at, at EHA in, in Germany, where we saw this ability to use a more intense combination of daratumumab, carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and DEX in frontline therapy with patients and continue it until they reach an MRD negative status and possibly develop strategies to stop therapy because everybody at the end of the day wants us to be able to stop therapy and not stay on it indefinitely. And so we're going to learn more about that trial and other trials like it in the near future. So these are exciting times in multiple myeloma. We're seeing CAR T cell therapy being used earlier in the disease course. We're seeing uh, uh, new forms of CAR T cell therapy with different targets and different strategies to make them faster. We're seeing new uses of our bispecific antibodies in combinations and new targets with bispecifics, as well as these other novel agents that are almost definitely going uh, to influence the field of myeloma. So these are great times for myeloma patients. I've been doing myeloma research for over 25 years. I don't know if we've ever had a year quite like this year, but these are great times. The caveat that I'll close with is that there are still challenges with these drugs. They still come with risks of infections and concerns that we have to monitor very closely, but it is definitely moving us in the direction closer and closer to curing this horrible disease. Thank you very much.